Now, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for the introduction. It's uh, great for me to be here today. Uh, and I'll be coming to work here full time from uh, January to be part of the Sports Medicine uh, Growing Pain Project. So this is a perfect chance for me to hit the ground running uh, here. Uh, and I've got two talks this afternoon, so I hope you won't get bored of me. The first 15 minutes I'll be talking to you about the anatomy of the pubic region. And at the end of the session, I've got another talk. My plan for the first talk is to talk about three main areas around the pubic region. I start with the pubic symphysis, then I talk about the inguinal canal, and lastly, the adductus. I'm doing it not like a traditional lecture, this is the insertion, origin, nerves, and stuff like that, because otherwise it will be a bit, uh, bit boring. I try and give you at each uh, location some new insights, things that I've found in the recent literature. So we'll start with the pubic symphysis. We see here, it's the joint at the anterior side of the pelvis between the two pubic bones. Around the pubic symphysis, we have the pubic crest, where the rectus inserts, and at the edge of the pubic crest, the pubic tubercle, where the inguinal ligament is inserting. And if we zoom in on the pubic symphysis, this is an axial specimen taken like this. And we see here the anterior side and the posterior side. It's not a synovial joint. The lining at the end of the pubic bone is from hyaline cartilage on both sides. And in the middle, there's a fibrocartilaginous disc. And in the center of that disc, there's a cleft. And we can see that there at the posterior aspect that the cleft is just opening up there a little bit. So it's not a synovial joint with hyaline cartilage and with a disc in the center with a cleft in the middle of that disc. We saw on the first slide that the symphysis is surrounded by a capsule. That capsule is thickened superiorly to form the superior pubic ligament and inferiorly it's called the arcuate or the inferior pubic ligament and this is much thicker than its superior counterpart. A nice paper by Robinson, where they dissected some fresh cadaveric specimens. This is again an axial specimen. So we're looking as if we've sawed through the pubic bone in this plane. And we're looking down on it. This is the anterior side here. These are the adductor longus insertions. Here's that fibrocartilaginous disc in the center. And here, the hyaline cartilage at the ends of the pubic bone. And what they saw when they dissected this was that there are direct insertions from the adductor longus. It comes through the, this sort of upper neurosis at the front. I'll come back to that later on. And insert directly into the disc. So they're not separate entities with an adductor and a, and a disc in the center. But these fibers run continuously through the structures. And they also found that for rectus abdominis, so we've got adductor longus inserting directly into the symphyseal joint and rectus abdominis inserting directly, and in some cases, the adductor brevis as well. So that's my first take home message for this afternoon. There are fibers directly from rectus, adductor longus, and sometimes the adductor brevis into the pubic symphysis, into the, the center of the joint. That was the symphysis. Now we talk about the inguinal canal. And I guess us Brits enjoy examining the inguinal region, as our Princess Anne is showing us here. So we'll zoom in on the inguinal region now. And we'll start with the ligament structures. As we saw on the first slide, at the superior aspect of the pubic bone, we've got here the pubic tubercle. And here, coming up from that, the inguinal ligament running up to the anterior superior in iliac spine. And the inguinal ligament's actually the external oblique that folds over on itself to form a thickening at the lower end of the external oblique. Running back almost horizontally from the inguinal ligament is the lacuna ligament. And that inserts here 
onto the ligament of Cooper. This is also known as the pectineal ligament as it runs along the pectineal line at the brim of the pelvis there. I really like this slide. It gives us a clear overview of the muscular layers of the abdominal wall. The abdominal wall has three layers. We've got the external oblique with the fibers running just like we're putting our hands in our pockets. The middle layer is the internal oblique with the fibers running in this direction. And the deepest layer, the transversus abdominis with the fibers running horizontally. What we see is that lower down in the inguinal region, that all three of those layers are coming onto the lateral side and crossing the front of the rectus here. The transversus and the internal oblique are fusing together here. I'll come back to that uh, in a minute. And the external oblique is also going into the linear alba here with many fibers crossing the midline. So it's not stopping in the middle, it's just continuing across the front. If we look here, we see here that in the external oblique upper neurosis, there's an opening, a sort of triangular opening. And this opening where the spermatic cord exits is the superficial inguinal ring. And if we zoom in on the inguinal canal, that starts here, this is the transversalis fascia. Here are the structures, the nerves, arteries, veins, and the uh, sperm ducts. They're coming in here, picking up at each layer as they pass through the different layers of the abdominal wall. They're picking up coverings to exit here as the spermatic cord down into the testicle. And this entrance here, where they enter the transversalis fascia, is the deep inguinal ring. So we've got the deep ring here as the structures enter the canal, passing through the various layers and exiting here at the superficial ring as the spermatic cord. And this is then the inguinal canal demonstrated nicely. On the medial side here, as I said earlier, that the transversus and the internal oblique meet each other. Uh, where they meet each other lower down is referred to as the conjoint tendon. And if you type in on Google conjoin and groin, I found this, uh, which wasn't quite what I was looking for, but I did like it. This is what the, the conjoint tendon is, where the transversus and the internal oblique meet each other and then come down to insert onto that pubic crest that we saw on the very first slide. So here's the the deepest layer, the transversus. This is the internal oblique. Then it's inserting down there. And the second take home message of today is that the presence of a true conjoint tendon is questioned in the literature. Uh, in a recent review from 2009, this is brought up. And that's mainly based on a large study by Condon who direct, dissected 135 male groins and found in only 3% of the cases a true conjoint tendon. In 8% of the cases, there were fibers from the transversus abdominis running down onto the pubic bone. But in the majority of cases, they were just fibers running and inserting onto the lateral side of the rectus sheath and not actually going directly down onto that pubic crest. And in most cases, there was more than half a centimeter between the pubic crest and the lowest fibers there. Luckily, we have some surgical colleagues with us, uh, so I'll be very interested to hear uh, their ideas about this and radiology as well, because I'm not fortunate enough to be able to be looking at it each day as a sports medicine physician. That was inguinal canal. Now we'll move down to the adductus, which is what I've spent most of my time doing the last five years looking at adductus. And we start here with the adductor longus the most commonly injured adductor. Here we see a nice preparation with a left and a right adductor longus running up here again to the pubic bones. We can see here clearly the musculotendinous junction here, demonstrated nicely. But what's interesting, if we take this muscle and flip it over, 
to look at the back side of the muscle. We see at the back, the muscle is entirely muscular. There's no tendon there. So the tendon's just on the front, superficial. And in fact, only 40% of the insertion onto the pubic bone is tenderness. The majority of the insertion is the muscle running right up directly into the fibrocartilaginous enthesis there. And there are many variations described. Here we see, here's again a right adductor longus and a left adductor longus that here, this is a muscle belly on the lateral side that's running up alongside the tendon all the way to the insertion. Uh, so here, even at the anterior side, it's a muscular insertion. There are many fusions that are described in the literature. Here we've got an adductor longus and here the gracilis. And here we, see, we can see clearly how they're fusing below the level of the insertion here to form one structure that's inserting higher up. So this is a fusion of the adductor longus together with the gracilis. This is described quite commonly. And we look here, we're now looking at the left adductor longus running down from the insertion on the pubic bone, just behind at the adductor brevis. And here we see the gracilis inserting into the medial side of the adductor brevis below the level of the insertion. So this is also reported that gracilis confused with adductor brevis. So that's the third take home message. Uh, variations are common. Fusions between the adductor longus and the gracilis and the adductor brevis and the gracilis. Where the literature agrees on all the studies I found that looked at this report that the adductors and the rectus are fused. Here we see it demonstrated really nicely with the adductor longus coming up and just continuing straight there into the rectus sheath. Also on this we can see how the gracilis fibers decussate from one side to the other, very nicely demonstrated. And this area here where it's uh, sort of between the adductor and the rectus insertion. This is referred to as the pre symphyseal aponeurosis. And we see that demonstrated nicely on this slide. So we've cut like this. We're looking on the pubic symphysis, the rectus coming down, and this here, the pre symphyseal aponeurosis. And as we saw back in a bit about the pubic symphysis, this is also inserting into the joint, and then the adductor longus coming down inferiorly. And that's the fourth and the last take home message of my presentation. Fusion of the adductus and the rectus abdominis uh, is present in all cases, and we refer to that uh, upper neurosis at the front as the pre symphyseal upper neurosis. So, rounding up. It's a bit like the plans for Doha Airport. The groin has many connections. We've seen adductor longus and the rectus insert directly into the symphyseal joint. The presence of the conjoint tendon, a true conjoint tendon, is questioned in the literature. Fusions of the adductor longus, adductor brevis with gracilis are commonly reported. And there's a fusion of the adductors that continues straight up into the abdominal wall, and this is referred to as the pre symphyseal upper neurosis. I've been telling this like it's all new, but actually, in a review from 2009 from Robertson, there was a beautiful picture from 1912, so we're going back to before the First World War, when Eisler made this sketch, where we see the true extent of the complexity. So it's actually not new at all. People have known about this for a long while. But here we see fibers decussating, continuing between adductors. Uh, so I think if you remember one slide of the whole talk, try and fix this in your head, because this gives a true representation of how complex the regional anatomy is and how many connections there are. Thanks for your attention.